everybody! Welcome to Painting Happy Little Minis. I'm Gretchen. And I'm Dave. And today we are painting some Forbidden Fortress from Flying Frog. Flying Frog. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's one of those box sets that have that has all of the names. So Flying Frog Productions makes a game called Shadows of Brimstone. This is the forbidden one of the Forbidden Fortress expansions. The enemy pack bone eaters. You know, I could just event eventually one day we'll get to the point where I just read everything on the uh, on the box. Yeah, I'll just. Well, I think I just did. Yeah, you, I think so. You you're did. all good. <laughs> you forgot ages twelve and up. Um, okay. <laughs> see, we don't worry about age restrictions in my house. Uh, it's all good. Yeah, but I have a uh, bone eaters is primarily what I have over here. Yep, I got bone eaters as well, and we have. Um, but, if we finish those, I don't think we'll finish all of those. No, there's there's a quite a, a quite a few of them. We have some hell vermin, yeah, as well, just in case. So uh, yeah, double headed uh, rat, rat dog, mutant dog beasts, yeah. which should be exciting. Mira thing, yeah. But one of the uh, cool things is hopefully later on um, we'll have we'll be joined by Aaron Lovejoy in the chat. Aaron and um, maybe Liz. I'm excited for a minute. I thought I was just gonna like pop out from under the table. Hey guys. Hiding him. <laughs> he's, he's behind this red curtain. <laughs> but uh, no, Aaron is the uh, studio painter for um, Flying Frog, and he's also in the the art of Miniature Monthly book. Oh. He's the guy who put together Miniature Monthly. Um, well, that's so nice. yeah, so we've got some photos to show later on um, if Aaron is able to join us. And yes, and I just noticed my hair is all kinds of crazy. <laughs> I'm blaming the Maryland humidity and it's very humid. My hair is for once not crazy because I got it done yesterday and she like super straightened it. I don't know what magic she did, but I woke up and it was still like still super straight. It was yeah. I was like wow. For a second there, I was going to throw you in a say she super glued it. Yes. <laughs> so glad that she didn't. <laughs> cool. We would have had to have that conversation. Was the terrain well, thing a separate stream that I missed? Um, I was not there due to reasons, no. so I yes. don't know what happened. We have not done the terrain. Sorry, uh, we haven't done the terrain stream yet, Jason. Um, but before we go too far, I'm going to say hi, Gary. Hi, Josh. Hi, Jason. Hi, JT. Uh, hi, Betsy. Hi, Roger. Hi, Greg. And hi, everybody else <laughs> who hasn't <laughs> sp spoken up in the chat yet. But uh, yes, Jason, we didn't do it. We are talking about doing it last week. We are talking about doing it the week before. We've had a yeah. few crazy weeks. We've so. had some interesting weeks here. And the long story, the long story, long story, is I want to, like, make sure that we do a good job on stream. So um, it takes a little bit of planning. So that's why we haven't uh, broken out the dungeon terrain yet. Yep. Um, and, of course, I don't. I'm not worried about how it comes up on camera. <laughs> Just kidding. Of course, I'm, of course I care about that. Of course. Um, I've been working on some um, Jackson Pollock type art yeah. on my, um, what do you call it? Wet I, if we had a mini, like, I could try it on a mini this size. I don't, I don't want to do it for this one because I, there's not enough, like, colors. But I yep. think it'd be fun to try to do like a Monet style, like okay, yeah, heavy paint stroke, yeah, definitely kind of a style on a mini one day. I don't, I feel like it'd have to be the correct mini yep. for that to really like shine. I think so. I think you're right. But uh, so, yeah, that'd be uh, that could be a lot of fun. I feel like that would look very interesting. You two are starting with different bases, like base colors. Oh yeah. Fascinating. Yeah, definitely. Are you going with the um, sort of the the box? Yeah, I'm box kind of following art? the box a little bit. <laughs> Pointillism. Yes. Point <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> that Point, would be interesting. Pointlessism. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> it would take less time to paint a mini with um, with pointillism than it would to like actually make a painting. Yep. To yep. be fair. Indeed. <laughs> If you want to do the pointillism thing, you could probably get some. Uh, there are probably some cool minis from the uh, Malifaux range oh, yeah. of uh, the ladies in the the big hoop dresses. That would you could be do cool. That yeah, whole... like that painting. Was that um, Surratt? Yeah. Yep. All right. La Grande Jatte. Yep. Ah, 
yes, look at me. <laughs> Pulling things out of my butt. You know facts. Uh, kind of. <laughs> uh, there is a good idea. Get a, gel a gelatinous cube and paint a different art style on each side. Oh. Ooh, very cool. And it could be the, uh, the gelatinous Starry art gallery. Night. What'd you say? You know, that would actually be cool, though, to set it up to where, like, you just had cubes in, like, picture frames and stuff. And then instead it would yep. be, like, a trap. And right. they would just, like, ooze out. Yeah, people would walk up there and go, hey, what's the... And oh. they just... Mm. Yeah, that can be fun. But yes, you're going with the, starting with the, sort of the, discussing pale, fleshy yes, color. Yes, a, a very flesh color is what I'm going with. And you're going to go up through some greens, yeah? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of get a bruised, icky, kind of fleshy look going for the blobby bits, and okay. then all up around his face where that kind of um, snot color is. Right. Nice. We'll, we'll go for the snot. Let's not color. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna mess around with two at the same time. Because I'm greedy like that. But uh, I'm going to start with uh, kind of an off green uh, down the bottom, and then work up through uh, some sandy kind of colors. All right. Uh, Gregory says, "Were the minis primed? Were they primed, Leona?" Yes. Uh, so yeah, Leona primed them. They, were, they didn't come primed in the box, right? No, they no. didn't. And they, they had to be assembled, too. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. There we go. On screen. There we go. There we go. Chaos. Yep. Sorry, Greg. Okay. <laughs> you can tell that uh, that can only gets used for priming two or three minutes a week <laughs> because it's still here. It's been out of, Chaos Black's been out of stock for quite a while. It's just, it, it it just uh, supply exist? issues. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, we had like a six pack. Oh, you have a six pack? Yeah. Oh, oh, so we still, oh. I think, have three more. Is it we'll expensive? have to talk after the show. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, no, we have a lot of chaos. Black. So. And just a lot of chaos in general. Keep, yes. keep, keep, talking. keep talking. Chaos energy is also here. <laughs> But yeah, Excellent. I always spray them with chaos. Um, I did have to assemble the. Actually, they were very easy because just that mouth head part yep. was the only part that I had to glue on, which was really nice. Okay, cool. You know, comparative to my dear friend Malifo. Right. <laughs> um, these were really easy. Yeah. Well, that's good. It's good to know. Send all your minis to Leona for priming. The first one is free. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Do you think you'd do that? Would you start a uh, miniature priming service, Leona? I mean, yeah, if people paid me for that, <laughs> I would. What? Yeah. I mean, I don't think I'm that good at priming. And I am... Willing to have Dave and Gretchen rate my priming <laughs> live. <laughs> I think camera. your priming has gotten very, very good. These are pretty smooth. These are like the, it's not chunky. Yep, that's good. I yeah, know I once tried or twice to be on better. the <laughs> Once or twice on the show, I think it was when Johnny did it. They were they were chunky. Sure, I'll throw Johnny under the I bus. Will. <laughs> I've definitely had a chunky. Uh, a chunky mini. prime. Yeah. Chunky prime. I don't think it's always bad though. It was texture. I remember there was one time that it helped because it was like a Halloween episode and it was the, um, it was like the Swamp Man creature. Oh yes. right, yeah, yeah. And it, it made the texture really like. I know what you're talking. Added yep. to that look. <laughs> that also, hi Sumki. Thanks for lurking. We Excellent. appreciate lurkers here. <laughs> we do. Leona, the prime pusher. <laughs> yep. Mm. Mary says, unless they're Reaper bones and you use an airbrush, learn the hard way. Ooh. One day I'll get my airbrush set up. Yep. Can I just have someone come to my house for me and set it up? Set it up? Yeah. I'd say Leona would do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's an extension of the uh, priming say, services. I was going <laughs> to say, I feel. <laughs> okay. And she's local. So. <laughs> I was like, I mean, maybe I can set it up. 
Maybe. I feel like I know enough people that would know how to set that yeah. up, <laughs> or that my my fiance would be able to figure it out eventually. I'm just it's just sitting there in the corner waiting. Right. And I I just haven't had the it's time. It's lurking. Or energy. <laughs> it's, it is. It's, it's lurking, lurking in the corner. It's like Gretchen. Why haven't you set me up? You'd enjoy this, and I'm like, oh, that's so much effort. It's like <laughs> having an IKEA shelf. Yeah. Staring at you, I, like, I mean, I can put furniture together, I can put things together, but at a cost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> JT, yeah. hairbrush setup is super easy. I, man, I feel like I'm going to make yes. a mess. I feel like the cat's going to get into it. I need to set up, like, a, a containment wall. zone. Yeah. That makes sense. Definitely, yeah. Your, your cat would, without a doubt, get into it. So. Gretchen, what did you use to get that maggot color? I used... Flesh. Pale flesh. I was going to say. Yes. <laughs> Plain and simple. I actually, I darkened it up a little bit, though. I darkened it up by doing a little teeny tiny tiny dab of smoky ink into it. Okay. And then I kind of just like slapped that on there and then I went back with just the plain pale flush to see where his muscles were better. So it's not like true dry brushing because it, it didn't really do anything like super visually noticeable. I just wanted to see better from my own eyeballs. <laughs> nice. Speaking of eyeballs, I went and had my eyeballs checked today. Oh. So JT says you'll want to get a spray booth, and Jason says it's like any other aspect of my hobby. Eventually, you just have to dive in and try. Yep. <laughs> oh, pink shirts today. I really wanted to see Dave in pink. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that took me a minute. We Last yeah. time you were here, we wore pink. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You need, to, you need to get with that. I, uh, I wore a rust-colored shirt last week, uh, which was almost... Almost we, too close. We need to, it was the closest we need to coordinate. To the we background. need to, it was the closest we could get. Except I wore black, so. Yeah, I feel like was... I can't wear red anymore. I'll yeah. just... <laughs> it's disappointing. I've got so many red shirts. Well, I've got th like three red shirts. Well, that before I, would like I couldn't wear green. Now I can wear mm -hmm. green. Yep. All, all the things I didn't wear previously. <laughs> Honestly, you could wear red. It's, a, it's okay. I could. You could blend. It'd just be me floating. Like, hey guys. I just kind of assume that all of my stuff is gray. <laughs> That's fair. I have, I have a lot of colorful things. A lot of colors. I have a lot of gray. <laughs> That's not shocking. No, not at all. I used to have a ton of gray and black, which I still do. I'm wearing black today. today. Yep. But... Recently, I bought like a bright blue shirt, and then I also have that pink one now. And I'm like, wow, color. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have fun with color. I don't think, I, I wear quite a few fun things often, but like I have two modes. Either I am dressed up and like I am, I am in appropriate clothing for my environment, or I, I Clark Kent, and uh, <laughs> I, I am in clothing where no one recognizes me. I used to come uh, come here, before I came here, I used to go to Starbucks all the time in my, yeah. at my old house. I would stop in at Starbucks. And they thought I was two separate people. <laughs> because, I remember you saying. Yeah, because yep. they saw me dressed up coming in to work here, and then they would see me like, on the weekend, not dressed up. Not dressed up, and they thought I was a separate person. And you're like, they're like, it's true. Who's, who's this? I'm sorry. Hey, there's somebody else who's called Gretchen. Yeah, she doesn't have eyebrows. <laughs> I do have eyebrows. They're just blonde. Nice. <laughs> like any other fair-haired person with. <laughs> So Gretchen, you might have said this, but are, you're doing like rotting flesh. Yeah, like kind of bruised, rotting, gross-looking flesh. That I th I'm thinking about like I got his little bit of red going on his belly here. Cool. Trying nice. to make it look not healthy. And like Dave, you're doing more like zombie. Um, no, I'm doing more like uh, alien. Oh. Like an alien, okay. not not alien from the movie Alien. Yeah but an alien species, small a. 
Gotcha. So, um, yeah, just uh, messing around. So at the moment I've got, um, I started with uh, Dark Sea, Dark Sea Blue from Vallejo. So Dark Sea Blue. Uh, then I moved, opened up my uh, Lupercal Green. So that's oh, a little nice. bit lighter and brighter than um, than the Dark Sea Blue, although it's still in the same family. And then I've added some Jade Green to um, to that. And as I'm working up, I'm basically that that Jade Green is now being worked in as a base color for kind of the upper areas, upper parts of the torso. Does the color feel true to life on camera? Uh, yeah, actually, it's pretty close. I know okay, it's the, good. The closest we've had for a little while. Good, good. So, very nice. And Gretchen, what are you using for the red? So for the red, I am using burnt red. Okay. And I am just kind of building that up a little bit and trying to get my blend on here to nice. make that tummy kind of... that that little pot belly look um sad you say <laughs> like, sad yeah <laughs> well like you, I, I want it to look uncomfortable like I want that kind of stretched redness oh let me of... tell you they're uncomfortable <laughs> <laughs> um so and then I'll he has like little warts I'll probably give him a little bit of leady kind of looks and I'm just gonna do my best to make him look gross yeah um i don't think i've ever really tried for gross on the show before okay so i can't remember that is gross. i'm sure i've probably tried gross before you you've done gross on the show multiple times yeah like deliberately though <laughs> okay i think so <laughs> i hope so uh, hello sean oh uh, josh oh, says hey, leona is a triple super secret goth it's true. How did you guess? <laughs> Excellent. But yes. Actually, the way it's looking at the moment, the you know, camera there is kind of like, he's almost radioactive. Yeah. So. But yeah, just getting in some uh, sort of base coats and I've opened up, see on the uh, palette now, this yellowish color is um, actually basilisk brown from um, the army painter. So I'm going to start mixing in the um, some jade green into that for the next um, next kind of step. And what I've got after that is I have some zandri. I'm going all over the shop today, so I have zandri dust <laughs> from Citadel, and then after so this will. Uh, desaturate that yellow quite a bit because as you can see there it's really bright and saturated so this will help desaturate it and then I have some um, ivory to mix in for the highlights so it should be a, a fun experiment at the moment I'm just using an old brush as well so it doesn't have a point um, then I'll come back to working in with the highlights uh, and the shadows with a, a brush with a point soon. We should be fine. And yes. So hopefully we've got that. Okay, yep. Oh, we're going to caught up. Oh, do we say hi to Shadrach? Um, yes, we did. <laughs> you did? It's because of the pink shirt thing. Josh Potter says, Basilisk brown looks a close match to bubonic brown. I think it is pretty similar, yeah. Yep. Bubonic brown is an old Citadel paint. So, but yeah, it's pretty close. It's also quite close to um, one of my favorite um, base paints from the Citadel range, which is um, Avalon Sunset. I think Avalon Sunset's got a little bit of, a little bit more orangey brown in it but um, it's quite similar but I haven't used it a lot so I thought hey now's the time to to try it while I'm experimenting with the rest of it 
but the plan will be that sort of as it goes up to the head and out to the tips of the arms with what are they called? Hands. Hands, that's it. Out on the hands will have the uh, more of that sandy kind of look. I hope. It should work out that way. Yes. There we go. So what has everybody been painting over the weekend? Oh, hey, it's Travis. Cool. Hey, Travis. Good to see you. Travis used to work for Cool Mini or Not and is one of the um, one of the folks that in the game Dark Age uh -huh. um, that I'm a big fan of. He actually had a um, a miniature based on him. Oh, that's cool. Yep. Yarl Ramsor, which is super cool. I want to be a mini for a game. Yep. Definitely cool. Limited edition Gretchen mini. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. I don't know we'll what game I would be in. <laughs> we'll have to make that happen. <laughs> should or give Ross a call. Yeah? Yeah. We'll get Ross, uh, Ross Thompson to have a go at that at, uh, at the op. Include you in a game somewhere? Yeah, just I'll just be there. The, uh, the unexpected person with a sword. <laughs> awesome. You should definitely do that. So, yes, we're doing that. But what have people been painting? There we go. Uh, Jason's saying, I actually just finished crafting some dock and small shacks. Primes, but not painted yet. That is cool. It's a lot of fun uh, messing around with, with terrain. I was doing some of that earlier today. But, uh, Shadrach has started working on more of his Cursed City stuff. I really love those sculpts. Easy to speed paint. But yeah, yeah, they've a lot of detail. So much detail, but that I think works both for it both ways. You can speed paint them nice and easy because there's a lot of washing and dry brushing that you can do, particularly washing really. Uh, and then, yeah, there's a lot of surfaces that you can build up with uh, great layering for competition pieces. Wow. Oh, Gary was recovering from COVID. Oh, no. Take it easy with that. Yep, definitely, definitely that. Take a break. Um, Betsy, Betsy's back to Horizon Zero Dawn, working on the Deathbringer. Very cool. After painting some of those uh, My Little Scythe <laughs> minis, that were very, uh, very, very cute. By the way, I can't believe at the moment that I've kind of stumbled on the uh, color scheme for Slimer. <laughs> and obviously, these pieces True. remind me of. I feel Slimer, like we switched this uh, this episode. You're doing the wacky colors, and I'm doing the very like subdued kind of. Yeah. Fleshy lump colors. Yep. How about that? And we didn't even talk about it before the it's show. It's in it. It just happened. Hooray for lack of expectations. I guess <laughs> is what, what we're, well, what I'm celebrating. <laughs> but yeah, looking cool. Uh... Roger Moore says, I wonder, I wonder what Roger's painting. <laughs> How many we got left, Roger? Is it three? Is it two? Two, I think. Is there one more? I think it's two. Exciting. Uh, Josh is working, uh, this weekend we'll be painting his gaming table to look like the Caribbean. Ooh. So they can play sail power. Awesome. Awesome. I saw okay. a, uh, an interview earlier this week with um, Tim Korklevsky, who uh, wrote the Ragnarok um, miniatures game. He, uh, he's done a bunch of work for um, Firelock Games and Blood and Plunder and that kind of thing. And he's working on a role-playing game set in the age of piracy, like the golden age of, that of piracy. That sounds fun. So definitely a cool uh, interview to watch. To see sort of how they're approaching a lot of uh, different things in that uh, in that genre, but yeah, looking excellent. Uh, JT is about to start a mini from Comet Lord Miniatures. Uh, it's a 3D print file. He's working on Kargath the Goliath Brawler. That sounds like a big miniature. That does. Anybody with the name Kargath? 
It needs to be tall and kind of beefy. Uh, <laughs> Josh says, I think I bought every shade of blue from turquoise to navy that Lowe's had. Nice. Yes. I'll, that would be I'll super love helpful to see for the how that, uh, how that turns out. You know yeah, what I always thought would be really fun to do for something like that is yeah. have one of the fish tank tables. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Where you have like an actual fish tank going on underneath and then on top you can just set it up. Nice. That could be uh, that could be really cool. There's some wild stuff. But um Oh. Yes. Oh, Roger says two. <laughs> Almost down to one left. That's good. Uh, Jason Sutton uh, spent the day cutting weapons for 3D models, from 3D models to generate a database of bodies with various heads, uh, hands, weapons, spell effects. So it can hash digitally before printing. Oh wow, excellent. That sounds like a really sort of interesting approach, taking the, rather than taking a pair of clippers and snipping them off. Yeah. Like this. I came close to cutting that finger off then, accidentally. Don't do that. But uh, yeah, doing that. That's forbidden. Digitally. It's forbidden fortress. <laughs> it's yes. forbidden to cut fingers <laughs> off. But uh, yeah, I think that'll be a, a fun, definitely a fun thing to mess around with. Doing it all digitally before you print it out. Nice. Um, Sean has been assembling outcast Malifaux models and painting the Victorian, uh, Victorias. Still working on the Slanesh Dread pageant. Excellent. Looking forward to uh, seeing those, Sean. Should be very cool. Hey, James. Welcome. Uh, Travis is working on some pagan miniatures for Ragnarok. I just mentioned Ragnarok. Um, Black Sight Studios uh, have recent release. I think I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. I think you might wrong. have. Uh, have released a game called Luna. So it's... Uh, Sort of a mini skirmish game. So I don't know, like a two foot by two foot kind of board, um, set on uh, on the moon, in the future, of course. But uh, yeah, so lots of back suits and so on. But yeah, I think that'll be uh, very cool. Love to see what you're uh, what you're painting out for that, Travis. Be awesome. Um, oh, Gary says under the black sail. Yep, that's the name of the uh, the RPG that. Um, Tim was working on for uh, file up games. Thanks for that. I couldn't quite remember. Also, hello to Seth. Oh, yep. Thanks for joining. Hi, Seth. And Sean says he's having a little painter's block on the Dread Pageant. Okay, I can see that. It's a there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff on that on that mini. But uh, yeah, if you throw up a um, like a work in progress pic on the on the group. We can jump in there and, and maybe provide some suggestions for, um, oh my goodness, this thing is just getting crazy. Uh, <laughs> provide some suggestions for, Do you know um, what it looks like? Color choices? Hmm? It looks like a thermal imaging <gasps> up on there. It does, doesn't like it? Like night vision goggles or something, is like, yeah. Is it too bright? Is it too bright? Is it too bright? On yeah, screen? on the camera. No. No, it's It pretty... looks pretty accurate. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, it just looks like a, like, it does look like thermal imaging. Like this right? would be, like mine would be what imaging. you see like yep. in the daylight and then yeah. yours is like someone looking through like. I switched to predator mode. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> there we go. Thermal mode. Yep. Now I've got to do some uh, like uh, red. In yeah. The, in yeah. The mouth there just really build up the, that level. You're absolutely correct. Uh, James almost has the trimaran done. Ooh. Very cool. So that's the one from the Reaper Bones 5, I think. Is that right, James? So, yep, we're excited to see how, how that looks, too. So, at the moment, I'm just dabbing these colors on. Not randomly, but not as controlled as uh, as could be, just getting down, them down as base colors. So, almost down to working on that, um, what do you call it? Basilisk brown as the as a straight up color, rather than worrying about including any green in it. And I'm thinking that maybe maybe I won't go through the um, Zandri dust there, and I'll stick with the um, 
the bright saturated yeah. colors. And what's everybody think? Should I stick with bright and saturated? I want to see what you do with bright and saturated. Okay. I think that's interesting. Cool. I am getting the last of this kind of fleshy red on. Yep. Pinky color. And then I'm going to go in with a little bit of purpley bruise color. Like he's been kind of fighting things and being gross. Right. Hooray. Hooray for being Maybe. gross. And I'll probably go in with a green. Right. I'm getting a lot of green coming out of my brush here, so I'm going to make sure I wash that out, dry that off, and then switch to another brush. For these final bits of that basilisk brown. Which I think is working pretty well there. Um, uh, Gary says I saw the interview on OTT, which is on tabletop, with uh, with Jerry. Uh, yeah, Jerry and uh, and Tim. That was where I saw it too. So on tabletop, if you want to go and check that out, uh, no doubt we'll have that available through Alliance uh, later in the year. I think I think the plan is for for it to be out December-ish, November December, which is pretty cool. And how does this look when I add a little bit of... Yeah. Actually, just by adding the that um, ivory, which has... It's white, it, but it doesn't have a lot of that saturation to it. That's going to knock back the um, that wild, bright color, I think. So we'll see how it goes. Maybe I don't use too much. Do, yeah, don't use a lot of it. Be the way to go. Uh, James says, uh, "No, Bone Five is a mono hull pirate ship." Okay. And it's almost done as a small trimaran three helm. Yeah. Cool. Gretchen, are you adding gray? No, this is actually a very little bit of bluey purple. Oh, nice. Um. Try to get all those flesh colors kind of in there. So a lot of like undertones and stuff for flesh. Um, when you see shadows and like pictures and stuff, if you, if you do the, the little, if you pull it up into an editing program and you do the dropper brush and you pull colors directly from that, a lot of the times you'll get more blues and purples and uh, reds than you expect to get, rather than just doing a simple um, like darker tan. Except this is a bit extreme because I want him to look kind of twisted and bruised and uh, not particularly healthy. Nice. He's looking good. So, but I definitely want him to look like something bulbous and fleshy. Yeah, I think it's working. So. Also, Travis says, found you on YouTube. Now I got you on the big screen. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Excellent. Well, welcome. That's the weirdest thing to see yourself on, like, whenever we did it, the independent horror film, when we, like, premiered that. Yep. That was, I think, one of the weirdest things. Seeing yourself up on the big screen? Yeah. You're like, yep. it's me! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be, uh, that would be weird. I must admit, I try not to watch myself. I thought um, I would dislike seeing myself a lot more than I did. I didn't particularly like be like, oh, I love seeing myself on the big screen. But oh, it, no, no, no. I was expecting it to be a lot more, um, to be a lot less happy with it, <laughs> I guess. Um, yeah. But I was... I think, it, like, I'd be used to say, like, seeing myself, it's, it's going to be me. It's going to be Dave on screen. But when you're playing somebody else... 
True. Yeah. I think that'd be a that'd be a different thing. I think I'd probably be interested in seeing how I did I do a good job of playing somebody else. So from that point of view, I would certainly sit down and, and watch. But thankfully, nobody's asked me to to do that. Yeah. <laughs> to play somebody else. I think it'd be really tough. So I applaud you for your uh, your acting. Play someone else to watch myself on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully somebody who's going to pay you, right? Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> That's the plan. <laughs> yeah. That would be good. Hi, Betsy's yeah. husband. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 no, we love it. Awesome. Yeah, last week, Gretchen, you weren't here, but we were at the Betsy family dinner table. <laughs> oh. Yep. The, the, Bow, the Bowers family table. Yep. Betsy yeah. actually is the, uh, she was the winner of the Ukatoa mini that we painted. Yeah. Excellent. And the game. Yeah, and the game, which is all going to be going out to um, ship soon. Very cool. Yes, and if it mm. if uh, Phil is in the chat, I sent out your mini yeah, two days ago, so that should be arriving like this weekend, hopefully. So he he won the Anya mini. Ah. Okay. Cool. That we were getting. Yeah. Would people in the chat like more Malifaux giveaways? There didn't really seem to be a lot of interest for the one of them, which, like, that's fine. Um, maybe I'll just do one big one where they're given away together. I think that's because of the way that I think Malifaux works uh, as a, like, it's a, crew, it's a crew game. Yeah. And you can't buy the miniatures individually. You don't really get them in, that, in those box sets. It's... It's better... I think it's probably better if we do it the together. Yeah. Okay. I'll do that. Might be the way to go. But yeah, we have most everybody from the what was the second crew? The crazy um no. The English Ivan box set. Yeah, English Ivan is mostly painted. And most then a couple from Anya's box set. Yeah. Which they're all the syndicate. Right? What's that? Uh, they're I all... Forget. The syndicate? Uh, Explorer Society. Explorer Society. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. The syndicate is the word, yeah. Cool. Explorer Society. Yep. Nice. The syndicate key word, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Which yep. mini was Anya? Uh, oh. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, do we have her uh, here? Yeah. No, because I sent her out. Oh, okay. Where is her? <laughs> okay. Maybe we have uh, her card. No, she... I sent that out too. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we have the box set that she came in. I do have that. Yes! I don't know where it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe I should just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> You've taught me some great stuff. My Horizon Zero Dawn game is great, Paul. <laughs> no, I love those minis and the way you've painted yep. them. So I'm really looking forward to seeing the rest. Yeah, also, definitely... hi, Dave. Different cool. Dave. Hey, Dave. Glad you can make it. Ah. I, I almost cool. just tossed my poor little mini. No. Syndicate is the key word in which you can hire. Yeah. I knew I was getting that wrong. Yep. But that reminds me, Dave here, I need to uh, actually just take a quick break and send Aaron a link to the show. So give me a sec. Don't worry, we're cutting okay. away. Excellent. <laughs> I can actually... Yeah. So it's a little um, overexposed from what is actually going on. Okay, let me try and fix that. 
but there's a lot of color happening. A lot of flesh colors. Okay. I have sent that. Love Jeff uh, Gretchen's featherless chicken color. <laughs> <laughs> but it is really good. It really does kind of look like an ugly featherless chicken right now. Yeah. That's... yeah. If, you, if you touch that thing, um, don't like wash your hands afterwards. Ew. Don't put it. You'll get sick. Mm. And yeah, it does look really good. It looks, uh, that's exactly what it looks like. So. Good. Disgusting featherless chicken. Ew. That's what we want. Yeah, it's looking great. Yeah, JC says liking the look of the flesh tones so far. Yeah, yep. definitely doing, I think, <laughs> what you want it to do. Yep. Which is like, well. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Natural 20 Games. Hello. Uh, nice tanned flesh tone. I'm assuming with salmonella. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think this guy does have salmonella. Yeah. yeah. Quite possibly. I was going to say, just make sure you don't lick your brush. <laughs> no, I'm pretty oh, good about not licking my brush. Yeah. You, on the other hand. I'll save that for me. Save yeah. that for me. I'll take all the food poisoning. Thank you. The brush licking poisoning. Excellent. But yeah, it is, it is nice and disturbing. It's definitely doing what you want, I think. Yeah. I just good. think about all the things I don't want to see on a mole rat. <laughs> yep. The flesh tones and bruised look reminds me of Mantic stuff for the plague zombies in Dread Zone. What's that? Right, yep. Yep, I think so, Josh. I would agree with that. Very creepy looking. I feel. Oh, hi, Kelsey. Thanks for joining. Sometimes we can't see your name because of Restream. Let me see if I can put... Uh... Let me who get the Facebook link to see... Who do we have? Name. We have Kelsey. Very creepy looking. Okay. I'll get the link so then we can see your name. It's still looking, um, I think on the camera, it's looking bright, but I think it's a little bit more contrasty than it actually is. So the, this, in real life, this fades a lot more. So it's just catching, at the moment on the camera, it's catching it, the, the main colors through there. So it looks like there's that yellow and then a bright green through the middle. And those dark ones, but it's, it is a quite a bit more um, subtle on, in real life. I was just thinking, where do I need to do some glazing to to tone it back a little bit? But I don't mess around with that. Some um, So taking some of that jade green and thinning that down. I'm gonna paint that up. Um, and some of that yellow, see how that goes. That's his name, Sal Manella. Yeah. He's the health inspector that is always hassling Garistro's Bistro. <laughs> That's a good one, Josh. <laughs> we can get that entire. Uh, we're building it. We're building a world here. We are. We are world building. We're building a community of. And uh, we're about to build a dungeon and like. <laughs> Garistro's Bistro can be down there. I'm really excited. We can excited. make a little sign. Wait, should we do that? Should we? <gasps> yeah. Maybe should. we should do that. Oh my gosh. Get a little get a little kit for the... <laughs> I can hear you so excited. <laughs> Mantic uh, Games does a uh, terrain crate. And it's kind of like a modern yeah. game sort of thing, which is great for like zombie apocalypse games. And they have like a, like wicker chairs and like cafe tables. Oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh. 
Yeah. See if we can get some of those. We that need, would be we need them. Sorry. Just so excited. Nice. Yeah, Could I think that would be good. great. We should definitely do that. What we do in the shadows reference. Haven't watched that show. Only watched like one episode, I think. Sorry. I watch bits of it around Halloween because it's it's funny. Oh yeah, it, I know it's funny. I just haven't watched it completely. Dave's looks like a poison dart frog. On oh, camera. it does have that kind of yeah, that kind of brightness about it. It's so good. Yeah, I know it's so good. I will. Re- I I'm, I'll watch it this Halloween. <laughs> I finally got to see the last episode of Loki. Oh! I had a coworker. What'd you think? I, I, I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed it a lot. Nice. I had a coworker who was so... He he kept asking me every day I went in if I had watched it. Oh, my it. God. He was like, I want to talk to you about it. And I was like, I'm sorry. I promised my fiancé I would not just watch it without him. <laughs> I have to say, I think the second to last episode was my my more favorite episode. Um, yeah, I mean, it was definitely a little but better paced, I think. I'm excited for what they do. I like what they're doing. What If is going on now. You yeah, the What If. I need to watch that. I was told that's really fun. Yeah, my friend was watching that. There's just a lot of, that. a lot of shows. Surprise, surprise. I haven't got to it yet. I'm going to add some yellow to this skin color. Wow, we're getting a lot of... It's good. Yep. A lot of love for what if? Yep. Yesterday's episode had all the feels. Okay. Yeah. Um, I know that their worlds are, like, kind of building off each other, and so I I feel like I have to keep up with them (laughs) Uh, a little bit more than I used to. I find that you don't, you don't actually have to keep up with them. That's true. If, if you know people... Who like them. Who are going to keep up, if you know a lot of people who are going to keep up with them, and then you just absorb all the information by osmosis. For example, I haven't watched any of Loki, but I'm aware there's a crocodile in there. Oh, yeah. Crocodile Loki. (laughs) Yeah. That was a good episode. That was probably my favorite episode, when they met all the Loki variants. Yeah, that that was definitely a good one. Such a good arc, too. Like, it was great. Do you have to buy the board game to get these figures, or do they come in a pack? Uh, They come in a pack. Yep. The Bone Eaters came in a pack of six, and the... Gresham's got the box over there, so... Yeah. Just throw that in. And they actually... I don't know if you want to... Um, um it's contents. There it is. It comes I with all read. the stuff on the inside, Rule too. book with painting guide. Six Bone Eaters. Six bases. One large enemy record sheet. Nine game cards and two reference cards. Yeah. Yeah. Note, requires a Shadows of Brimstone core set to play. (laughs) Excellent. So yeah, you can get them all separately. And the vermin, although they're not painting them right now, that that only had um, three in it. Dang, some Marvel love up in here. Yeah. <laughs> the last episode of Scarlet Witch and Loki sync up. Cool. Where Kang hears something, it's when Scarlet Witch fully appears. Apparently, uh, Dave, JT's wife, does what you do, where you just have friends. Right. Know. Yep. I do that for some things. <laughs> the end of Loki is what causes what if. Yeah. Also, if you watch them by side by side. <laughs> oh my gosh. See, some people just have too much time. I mean, I won't say that. <laughs> some people just have not enough time. 
Some people are excited. And some, some of those people are me. People yeah. are excited. And you <laughs> know what? That's awesome. I'm just going to... Like, I'm excited about the Ten Rings movie. Oh, I really want to okay. see the Ten Rings I'm movie. I'm really ex- excited about that. Is that in theaters yet? Release date, summer, September 3rd. Okay, coming up. Soon. A lot of time between teams meetings. <laughs> That's true. That's how you're able to get all those edits done. (laughs) (laughs) Cool. Also, LOL, when I I went to see um, Black Widow in theaters, which I thought was pretty good. I enjoyed it. Um, But then they had an Eternals trailer, but it was like an extended trailer. (laughs) And I was like, well, don't need to watch the Eternals movie now. Oh, really? Well, yeah, because it was like three minutes or something. I don't know. It was really long. I suspect the movie might be longer than that. <laughs> there might be other things that happened in that movie <laughs> that aren't in the trailer. But you're saying that there's a lot of the... I don't know. It felt like there was a lot of the trailer. Right. I mean, there was a lot of the movie A lot in of the movie the in the trailer. Mm-hmm. A lot of important things. Yeah. Well, they didn't show the like end credit sequence, right? So you've got to go for at least for that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'll check out what if. I'm excited. Cool. Unboxing Reaper Bones three through five <laughs> between te- teams meetings. <laughs> nice. Just become a YouTuber in between <laughs> teams meetings. All right, let's check in. Dave, what you doing now? Um, I painted some... uh, There we go. I painted the teeth. And I painted some um, kind of blood dripping from his uh, maw there. And around the teeth. Uh, And now I'm actually... I'm mixing a little bit of black with some burnt red for a shade. I'm going to just add a little bit of extra depth to the... To the dark green down here by just painting this in. So, oh, okay. so using the like contrasting um, color, so red against the green to um, add some extra depth. So that yeah, you see it. yeah. So, just, so you uh, added just black to the burnt red. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The burnt red was just a little bit. It was a was a lighter color than the the darkest green that I had in there. So gotcha. I needed to add that black to to get the tonal shade, I guess. And you're kind of doing that because you're already going with the saturated colors. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, the, having the saturated colors sort of everywhere else, having that, the desaturated, so just going with all the contrasts, essentially. Right. So the hue contrast, the tonal contrast, and the saturation contrast to really add those shadows back in down on the legs there. Nice. So... I think it's coming out pretty well. Maybe a few little bits and pieces that... And again, if it dries and I think it's a little bit too bright, I can just um, go and mix in a little bit of the... either the Lupercal green or the Dark Sea... Um, dark sea blue to um, turn that back. Where There we go. Just wondering how I needed to turn it to show it on camera. So you can see um, here with the that black and um, let's move that. There we go. The mix there. If I paint that on, and if I painted it up onto the t- sort of the tail there, and if it started to look more like stripes than shadow. Yes. What I can do there. Just mix a little bit of that um, jade green 
I've got back into the, that. And then sort of paint back over the that burnt red. Or glaze back over it. And then any oh, in those highlights, I can come back and highlight the, the tail again. Oh, cool. Just to create a little bit more emphasis there. So, yeah, I think the guy. He's looking great. This guy's. Uh, it's basically done? done. Wow. All right, let's jump over to Gretchen and see what you're doing. So, I have my chicken flush, <laughs> right? Fresh plucked. Uh, <laughs> I was about to say a bad word there. Uh, fresh plucked chicken. <laughs> do not say that three times fast. Yeah, do not. <laughs> do not. Uh, not on air anyway. Uh, and now I'm going in with a dark green that I mixed with ultramarine blue and gold yellow because I wanted it to be grimier than the green that I had. And I'm going to put that on his face and then I'm going to kind of stipple it down his, uh, his back. <laughs> cool. Whatever, whatever you want to call that growth going on. Oh, there. that like yeah. hump thing? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so you're kind of putting it in like the exposed flesh parts. Yeah, I'm gonna stipple it, and I, I kind of almost want it to look like um, I don't know if I want it to look like a slime or a like a sludge or you know um, I just want it to look gross. Just uh, give me an idea idea there. Yeah. We can keep talking. I'm just gonna run with it and see how it, yeah, just see how it turns however, out. Yeah, however, like what what would I oh, definitely? Oh yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's yeah. starting to already kind of look. So like slimy, like sludgy, gross. I'm kind. I'm going yeah. off the cover art, but I'm also like trying to make it grosser than the cover art. Oh, gotcha. You, like with my chicken flesh and my dark are, algae slime. You are succeeding. <laughs> succeeding in spades. What what about this would be like just not fun? That translucenty flesh. All right, are you guys ready to look at some models? I Minis, think we are. I mean, I always am ready. Cool. Go. So we're gonna take a bit of time and look at miniatures from our painting happy little minis group which we have on facebook i'm gonna put it in the chat many of you are part of it but it's a fun time where we have a little community we post what we're doing we talk about it and then every week i ask people uh if they'd like to showcase their minis. And then we talk about them on the show. And we say nice thing, things. We only <laughs> say nice things. Excellent. Sorry, I didn't realize it was up. Oh, thought, it's okay. I thought I was just like the longest intro ever. Yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> I was just kind of talking and talking and I was <laughs> talking. That's know. okay, you can say, you can say Dave. And I'll be <clears> quiet <throat> now. <laughs> uh, cool, I think, uh, so, so Arthur Scott Klingenpeel. Stegodon and Friends from the GW Lizardman Fantasy Battles range. Wow, there's a... There's a lot of models on this. I, I thought that these might have been like smaller 3D printed models, but they are not. They are, uh, these ones are from the original Lizardman range, which was released in like 96, I think. Um, so yeah, these are all metal, including that awesome Stegodon in the middle, which is uh, great. It's got that awesome howder with the the big crossbow and the, the shields. That'd be and amazing to ride in the battle. That would be. It would be fantastic. Who would be in your way? Who would stop you? Who would stop you? Absolutely no one. And it's tough to get around from behind because of that spiked tail. But uh, yeah, I think uh, Arthur's done a great job here um, with this little, little group. I'm not sure um, if this is a display base or is it or if this is for use in uh, something like Kings of War. 
where you can have a big horde of, uh, of models, but yeah, looking really good. Nice work there. Oh, Ashlyn has painted up the first orc since uh, 1993 from the AOS Getting Started magazine. Well, I think that is it cool. looks great. It, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, these are the uh, the new uh, Cruel Boys, the Auric Cruel Boys from Age of Sigma. Uh, and yeah, looking really good. I love the, the bright, vibrant green of the, the skin contrasted against that, the desaturated browns and, and the sort of the desaturated red there on the shield. I love a good bright green work. Yeah, yep. They're definitely good. These, uh, these models have got a great um, sort of design aesthetic, which has got a lot of uh, old school Games Workshop kind of um, orkiness to them with those uh, those shields. And there's also a really um, big sort of Alan Lee. I think it's Alan Lee, who's a um, artist who's done a lot of uh, Lord of the Rings art mm -hmm. and did a lot of the concept art for um, uh, Peter Jackson's films. But uh, yeah, looks look fantastic there, Ashlyn. Really good. And I love that swampy base as well. Nice work. Oh, Brian has been working on a dragon. A, a flying frost dragon. Or a white dragon, I guess. But uh, yeah, looking really good there. I love the... Um, the, the, the scales along the spine and the sort of the ridges of the, the wings. I'm going to use my hands for wings. <laughs> that. But uh, so the fingers ridges along there they look great in that, um, that almost white, but it's got that nice, um, there's definitely that difference in the, the, um, oh, what do you call it? The wings, the membrane. Oh yeah. The, membrane the texture of the wings. difference and the membrane and then that just. Yep. Yep. Definitely harder working well. shell of scales along the back. Yep. It looks, uh, it looks great. And I, I like the, uh, the way you've treated that, Brian. Looking very good. And that lovely uh, pink mouth as well. So you know when it's screaming at you. Ah! Right before it uh, freezes you with its breath. Nice one. Excellent work. Oh, Chris Gawker has been painting up a whole bunch of uh, Plague Marines. So this is a Lord of Contagion that he's working on. I think he's got... A few, uh, a few more stages to go on this, but uh, looking really nice. I think that um, Chris is really, I think he's really enjoying the uh, painting the green armor on these. It's uh, coming along really nicely, and I'm loving the the highlights on that the leather wrap oh, yeah. on that axe there. Looking great. All the little edge highlights are just really well well placed. Yep, definitely cool. Well, good, and that uh, the smoke is is also really nice. Coming out of those sensors there. Looking great. Oh, Jason says the uh, that dragon is the Whiz Kid's young white dragon. So, very cool. But yeah, nice work, Chris. Loving it. Oh, Gavin Williams. I think Gavin just joined us recently. Is that correct, Leona? Yes. Yeah. I think. Yes. Actually, yep. yes. Gavin joined within like the last few months. Okay. A month or two ago. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, a Night Goblin Squig Herder from the Old World. Looking cool. So the, um, the Night Goblins do a lot of um, messing around with Squigs. When I say messing around, I mean herding them and trying not to be eaten by them. Uh, but the cool thing about this as well is that, that those bagpipes that he's playing are also a Squig. <laughs> so um, yeah, I think right around his um, hands there, there are some eyes. Oh that. no. Yeah. So he's blowing into it, inflating the bladder and then squeezing the squig. But uh yeah, looking uh looking good, Gavin. I think um I really like that that goblin colour there. It's a classic um goblin green. Looks like you've put a, a green wash over it, but yep, looking nice. Coming along. I think Games Workshop are planning on releasing Warhammer the Old World in about two years. So you've got enough time there to paint up your enormous Night Goblin army. Looking good. Oh, Jeff has painted a male assassin from Dark Sword miniatures. 
really like the fluidity of all those highlights on the fabric. Yep. Yep. Looking really good. I think, uh, yeah, there's great uh, depth, particularly in that purple. I love the, uh, just the, the variety of tones in there. But uh, looking really nice. And the, uh, is that hair popping out? Do you think the, the red at the top oh, there? Oh, it might be. I don't know if it's hair or tassels, but uh, but no, I think it's uh, looking good here, Jeff. Very cool. Loving the purple, as I said. Nice work. Oh, Jake English. Painting Zania, the Golden Duchess. It's a work in progress on uh, this bust here. This is a very, uh, very interesting one. I, I, I've seen this painted a few times and it's sort of been different every time. Uh, so, yeah, I haven't, uh, I haven't painted a bust yet. So I'm, I am excited to paint one. I've got a friend who's 3D printed one for me, but. Uh, I like the jewel tone of the green that he used for her skin, building it up from that right. dark, dark, dark to that kind of um, emerald. Almost jady green. Yeah. 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 It's looking uh, looking cool. I'm. I love. I'm gonna say I'm loving the eyes mm -hmm. as well. They've got that fantastic um, depth to them. You can see. You can. There's something you can do with a bust as well. Go in and paint, paint the iris, paint the pupils, paint the um, the little red mm -hmm. burst of vessel, blood vessels around the edge. Uh, but yeah, come along, Jake. I think uh, I'm excited to see uh, where you take her. Looking good. Oh, Jason has painted up the Dracolich from the Ravenloft board game. This is looking cool. I didn't know better. I'd say that you'd put a uh, little LED inside the um, inside the head. Yeah. You've got excellent uh, sort of otherworldly glow coming from the inside there. I think that's, uh, I think it's, you've painted all of that. So you've got that blue inside the mouth and there's the, the greenish uh, blue, sort of the teal inside the, the eyes. And then if you take a look down the, um, the rib cage, mm -hmm. there's more sort of magical glow oh, coming yeah, from inside there. Oh yeah, there's a little bit of blue. So yeah, really great effect there, Jason. It's looking, uh, looking super cool. Nice work. Oh, Joseph Lynch, Standard Bearer, the last remaining relic of my old Chaos Army. Circa 1998. Oh my goodness, that is old. Because <laughs> that guy was released in like 96, I think. Late 96. But, oh, wow. Are you starting a new Chaos Army, Joseph? You'll need to let us know. But uh, this is looking cool. Is it... Um, have you gone with highlights of blue, or are you going with a dark blue, like a Night Lord's? Kind of look there. Still see sort of from this angle, but uh, yeah, and you can tell it's an old model because that's on a 25 millimeter wide base, I think, uh, and now they're on 40 millimeter bases. So, but yeah, even that base is classic. <laughs> nice one, Joseph. Thanks for sharing. Definitely cool. I think he uses bounty as well. Pretty sure that's a that was a bounty uh, cloth behind it. Josh Edwards, Age of Sigmar Frost Lord on Stonehorn. So I, don't, I haven't painted up my Stonehorn yet, but I do have an ogre army, and I'm really, really loving this. So the Stonehorns have uh, their horns are basically stone growths. <laughs> are they Instead stone? Of, are, they are the stone horns? Believe it or not. Stone? Believe it or not. Some people won't see the obvious nature in the naming, but as an Australian, <laughs> that's what we do. The Great Sandy Desert, for example, is a, um, a desert that is quite great and sandy. But uh, yeah, the stone horn is, uh, is looking awesome. I'm particularly loving the, uh, the contrast between that sort of that uh, yellowish orange that you've got going on around the, the face and then that icy blue underneath its feet there as if it's stalking across a glacier. Yeah, looks great, Josh. Nice work. 
been cool. Oh, Josh is paint Josh Marshall is painted up uh, some Star Wars Legion, a Star Wars Legion commission. So these are all clone troopers there, with General Kenobi leading the way. Yes. Looks like they're all getting ready. These look great. I wonder if they're a um, their particular uh, detachment regiment with those red boots. Uh, yeah, that's if there's something from canon, or if this was one that uh, that Josh created or his client created, but uh, looking good. I think um, I really like that the the red isn't is that de sort of desaturated red, which means that that the blue on those shoulder pads, that saturated blue, really pops. On me, but yeah, looking cool. Nice work, Josh. Great one. Oh, JT has painted up a scientist and soldier from the Nemesis board game. Yeah, these are looking really good. Very nice. I'm particularly excited by the um, by that fade that you've got going on on the soldier there. With a, uh, it could be a smart gun, but basically on that uh, that helmet. Those little highlighting, have a little cracks, little cracks appearing across that glass. They're looking good, and it looks like the uh, scientist there is in a in a wheelchair, which is great to see some. Uh, Additional diversity in the models. They're looking good. But yeah, looking nice, JT. Very cool. Oh, Kelsey has painted up uh, Boba Fett from Star Wars Legion. And I, with this one, I really love the uh, the work that Kelsey's done on the... Um... There are a lot of details for how small that is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. But I love the, the uh, jetpack glow. Go from that white through to uh, the black over a fairly short space of uh, space there. But yeah, looking good. Lovely dented helmet and all. That's a great Boba Fett green they've used there, Kelsey. Nice work, looking great. Cool, Marco has painted up uh, some soldiers from Escape from Stalingrad Z. These are insiders here. Um, Done a great job there on the uh, on these uh, German soldiers. So I haven't heard of Escape from Stalingrad Z. I have not. It heard be of a, that is it a board game? I'm thinking it might be a board game, but uh, looking good. One of the um, interesting things about painting uh, World War II German soldiers, and say so a lot of people will go, okay, well this is. They'll, they might read a, um, a book that has a like a color recipe for the pants and the jacket, and then they'll go, okay, well this is how it is, and anybody who doesn't paint it like this is painting it wrong. And there's a fantastic meme picture of a collection of maybe thirty different jackets, yeah. and all of them are a different color, ranging anywhere from like completely gray through to completely green. And everything in between. So, I'm going to say Marco's done a, a lovely job on here, as well on those um, on those uniforms. Nice work. Excellent. I'll have to look into Stalingrad Z. Oh, Michael Sanders has repurposed Ironman on foot into an Infernal Master for a uh, thousand suns. Yeah, I think Ironman on foot is from the uh, Warhammer Thirty Thousand. The 30k box set, one of the like betrayal at Calth or something like that. that. Glowing green. No, burning a Prospero is what it is. But yeah, yeah, you're absolutely sort of hit the nail on the head there. And this is um, actually using a piece. I think um, I don't think we've painted them. We might have painted them before. I don't think we've painted any screamers. Have we painted any oh, zinc screamers, which are like I don't think we have manta ray kind yeah, of things. Yeah, I don't think we have. But uh, yeah, the, all that green glow and the green magic there at the top of it, there are two mini screamers. So that piece is from the new um, Hexfire box set, which probably came out on the weekend. So Michael has been super quick to paint this up. But yeah, beautiful job. And, and as Gretchen said, that green glow is, is lovely. The way you've treated it on, the, on those parchments at the front looks really nice. Excellent work. Oh, sorry. Uh, Josh Potter has said same thing with US uniforms. Yep. 
pretty much. So you've got a lot of freedom there. Mike Chapman has painted up Bellacore, the Dark Master. And you can Ooh, tell he's painted that this up. Has, now that's goth. We were talking about goth earlier. Yeah, this is definitely uh, the ultra goth. <laughs> he wins. Yes. Got any blacker? And chains. Yep, so many chains and dangling skulls. So, yeah, Mike's done an awesome job on, on this one. Having all that, uh, like the black skin and the black wings really helps that, um, the sword. Yeah. That, um, little sort of bale fire on the sword pop. It's looking, uh, looking really good. And it's painted up for 40K because he has put the space marine on the, on the base. If you want to paint it up for Age of Sigmar, there is a Chaos Warrior. I believe it's Chaos Warrior. Maybe it's Stormcast Eternal. But, uh, yeah. Great work, Mike. This model is huge as well. It's like just big. Wow. Excellent. Nice one. Oh, speaking of some uh, Age of Sigma. Oh. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. So Mike Majors has been uh, working on this Age of Sigma killer boss on Great Nash Tooth. Tooth. So we're talking about Ashland's um, Cruel Boy before yeah. this is the uh the boss of the cruel boys um again from the dominion box set and mike's gone for the that bright um bright green paint job on the the flesh and that sort of desaturated red on the shield but uh really brought this together with that purple on the nash tooth which looks great it's purple gray kind of look yeah really nice uh, nice work on that like, and all that sort of dark, heavy steel. Kind of look at those spikes on the helmet and the, uh, the jagged blade there. And yeah. And I think um, on the... I could be completely wrong, but I'm pretty sure that on the, like, the hindquarters there of the Nash Tooth, it's got a brand. And that brand links up to the, the shield, the pattern, the design on the shield that connected. That's really cool. Basically say the... So the Killer boss is saying, "This is my, this is my shield. This is who I am. This is how I scare people, with the shield." So that pattern is repeated on my steed. But yeah, lovely work, Mike. Looks great. Oh, Drew from One Inch Heroes has painted up a uh, navigator. Ooh. Drew's been going through and painting up uh, kind of a an Inquisitor Twenty Eight sort of style uh, warband. And this conversion is looking really nice. I think the body of this is from a Dalak ganger from Necromunda. And uh, I'm really not sure where the head is from. It's cool. It might be some green stuff at the back to elongate it. But the navigators have a, uh, in Warhammer 40,000, have a third eye that they keep covered normally, but when they go into the warp, uh, oh, of they course. reveal it so that they can see into the warp and How navigate through it. How else are you going it. to navigate? Yeah. Um, if anybody who isn't a navigator sees their third eye, they basically go mad. That's not okay. Or blind or turned to stone. One of those three. I can't remember exactly, but yeah, not a pleasant thing. <laughs> but no, excellent work there, Drew. Looks fantastic. Oh, Phil Dickerson has painted this. Check out this crazy model. It's part crab, part. I love how hmm? colorful that is. What was that, the owner? I made a sound. You made I made a sound. a sound, but it wasn't a crab sound. Okay. <laughs> it was a bird sound. But it could still be appropriate for this model. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't. We don't know what sound he makes. It's a little bit of a. <laughs> You're all dead sound but yeah Gretchen I think you're correct to the there's a lovely mix of colors on this that it's pale very, blue very under the sea yep and I love the uh the speaking of under sea the basing on that it looks great it's got that uh that wonderful sort of current shifted sand kind of feel to it a little bit of coral over the side awesome work Phil it looks great Cool. Last one. Oh, Bill Carroll is saying I backed the Kickstarter about 200 minis, minis to paint. I'm guessing that's, is that Escape from Stalingrad Z, Bill, that you're talking about there? 
And Sean, yes, probably a lot of clicking, without a doubt. Roger Moore. This is the third to last. Has painted King Arthur for Monumental. Oh, we've made it to Arthur. We made it to Arthur. So who's left, Roger? You need to let us know. The anticipation is killing me. But no, looking great. Really enjoying this one. And I love that he's uh, resting the sword on the stone or pulling it out from the, <laughs> the stone. But yeah. Looking very uh, very medieval King Arthur. Sort of late, later medieval. Um, very cool. Nice one. <laughs> yes, this is the third one. Who are the last two, Roger? Tell us, tell us. Hopefully you're typing away. Maybe, maybe yeah. he wants to leave it a surprise. He wants to leave it a surprise? Maybe we should guess. You know what I, I need to do? Then? I, don't I, don't I need to go back and gotten there yet. I have to go back and have a look at all of Roger's posts. Yep. Check every single model. Check it off against a uh, a contents list of the. Tell us what their names rhyme with. <laughs> what do they rhyme with? So when you Jonah were talking Bark. about. Oh, I almost said Genghis Khan. Oh my god. Oh, Genghis gosh. Khan, Joan Mark. Okay. Nice. Nice. And Genghis Khan is last. How do you know he is the king? He's the king. Well, he does have a sword. And maybe he's in the in the act. So you're saying that I need to wait until it's all the way out of the stone? For a cl- <laughs> crown and king? It seems like just a little bit of uh, red tape there. But when you were talking about stippling, mm-hmm. it just made me think of, I should go and paint um, a way that I can get that... Uh, like the variation to happen and look on camera without um, the uh, sort of the subtleties that are there in real life is painting it's not stippling but just painting that pattern down the back oh yeah I don't do that anywhere near enough so but I think that's worked pretty well looked quite nice there so yeah I think that guy's done yeah, I'm almost done with mine. Yeah. I decided I to add some like weird blood in the grooves that right. he has going on the back there because it kind of reminded me of a brain Ooh. or like blood vessels or. Yeah, that's that's looking really. Um, that's awesome. N- yeah, really so, awesome and gross. Yeah, that's exactly awesome. Yeah, time. I don't. Beautiful. He's looking don't know great. what that's about, but it just felt like a good idea. It just seemed like the way to go, the right way to go. It seemed gross. Yep. I'm going to take a different tack for the second one. Do something. Well, maybe not a different tack, but just switch up the colors. And start with uh, purple instead of the green. And work through that up to the, the same sort of colors and see how that looks. But I only have, well, we've got 35 minutes to do it. Yeah. yeah. Let's see how we go. Can we do it? Oh, you're making another guy? Yep. Okay. Rather just sit around for 35 minutes. Yeah. I think that's fair. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> Please show us your ways. Yeah. Well, I almost thought that you might want to batch paint because there were three. Yeah, initially that's what I was thinking. I was going to batch paint two of them. Yeah. But then I realized like I didn't have a clear idea of what the first one was going to look like. Oh. So it was like, oh, I'm just going to stop and work on this one guy. So I'm kind of doing the same thing now, but because I know roughly what I need to do. Warren, I can do this one a little bit quicker. So again, just using an old brush to slap on that. Oh, and on camera, this looks, that purple looks much more intense than it actually is. <laughs> okay, I can turn the saturation down. Yeah. Um, it's looking a lot, it's a lot bluer than Okay. it is. That's starting to, that's starting to get there. Yeah. 
But, uh, yeah. So I'm starting with that. Is that a little better? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I'm good. Uh, and then I'm going to add in some Warlock Purple. So Hex Lycan was the first one. Warlock Purple. Okay. Warlock Purple. Warlord Purple. So this is more of a magenta kind of look. And... <laughs> Salmonella's horoscope sign is Cancer. Not the big crab constellation, just Cancer. Right. <laughs> yep. That's funny. Yep. Oh, I'm touching things as they're still wet. What no! Oh, he looks great. Yeah. Yeah, that looks... Did you do highlighting on the green? Yeah! With, like, another... I used livery green, because I still have all my paints out from the last time I was <laughs> painting. So I was like, that looks a lot like the cover art. We will take our inspo, our cover, yeah. our cover art inspo, and make it grosser. That looks fantastic. That is so, so gross and disgusting. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Oh, it kind of, kind of looks like, like, fresh slime is light lime green, and old, crusty slime is dark green. Yeah. Um, and then whatever's going on on his back. I don't know what's going on there, but it's oozing. There's some, uh, <laughs> there's some infection going on in that back, without a doubt. He's living his best life. Yeah. He's gonna eat your bones. He's a bone eater. He's crunching. Nom 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 nom. Nom nom nom. That looks like something that wants bones. Indeed. Maybe. It's all about the marrow. Let's see, maybe I can paint this guy. Uh, quickly. Yeah? Maybe. Oh, okay. I don't know. I'm gonna do the... I'm gonna pass over that. There we go. Uh, uh, like a rat dog. Rat dog craziness? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I got this. Yep, you can do it. You can do it. Okay, and some more basilisk brown. Let's see what this looks like when you mix it in with uh, of purple. Ooh, that's interesting. Oh. When I added it into the jade green, mm -hmm. it gave a very saturated color. Adding, mixing it into the, well, the purple here is more like turning into a, like a peach or a, a salmon. Oh. So that's interesting. Oh. That's what it looks being painted over black. And again, just do it nice and quickly. Do do, 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 do. Yeah, I'm just slapping some gray on here. Salt gray. Yep. We'll see how quick I get through it. Actually, I can pop this guy up on the spinner because he's done. Okay, cool. Let's see. Yep. We only got some, uh, some new batteries, so our spinner is operational. They think you will find the spinner is fully operational. <laughs> That, those sort of snickers, the chuckles that I got from you guys, <laughs> were like, let's humor him. <laughs> that's what they screamed, they screamed, let's humor him. Not, that's funny. It was, let's humor him. <laughs> there we go. Don't worry, he's coming. He's coming. Spinner is coming. Great. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. He's looking swell. Swollen. Swell. Swollen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's disgusting there. He's yeah, I love that uh, that work you did on the on that back hump. Looks amazing. Yeah, dang, that looks awesome. Bump it down, maybe. Oh, yeah. there we go. Do you like it better, a little darker? I feel like you get truer color. It's like in between. There we go. That's, that's okay. More of a. I'll just bring the. Brightness down just slightly. 
cool. I feel like you see more of the uh, shadows and highlights. With yeah, the... it's not as blown out. Yeah. Hopefully, that's what I'm trying to do here. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> I feel like oh, if he hi, were to Aaron. touch you, his hands would oh. be cold. Aaron's here. Awesome. Oh, hey. I like the brain. Great idea. Yep. Super cool. If the athlete's foot were a miniature, this is what it would look like. Yes. <laughs> I feel like his grasp is just always moist in a Yuck. cold, yeah. clammy mm. manner. Yeah. You do not want to touch those hands. Yeah, I actually really like the green. So what was the green color? The green for the dark using? green, I did equal parts gold yellow and ultramarine blue. And then for oh. the light green, I just used delivery green and dry brushed it on there. Nice. Yep. And cool. But yes, excellent. So we have um, we have Aaron here. Hooray! Hello! So um, now we have Aaron in the chat. Ha <laughs> uh, Aaron, what we're going to do, I sent... Um, so, sorry, I'll step back a bit. Um, I mentioned before that Aaron is uh, the studio painter for Flying Frog and has painted uh, the, a lot of the minis, possibly all of them, have painted all of them, I think, for Shadows of Brimstone um, as the studio painter. And Aaron is also in the first, the very first The Art Of book, The Art Of Miniature Monthly. Because Aaron started Miniature Monthly, uh, and he is going to be the first, he's the first artist in the whole of the series. So, um, I, oh, yeah, Aaron said he painted all of them. So, every wow. single studio miniature that you see from Shadows of Brimstone, Aaron painted those. But uh, as a little bit of a sneak peek, I think, at the, um, uh, the Art Of series, I certainly own some of the... Um, pages from the PDF, the work in progress PDF. Yes. Oh, Aaron said he didn't paint, you didn't paint the bone eaters? Ah. Uh, no. Lies. Well, here you go. We can send them. We can send them along. Our finished <laughs> versions. <laughs> That'd be good. But uh, yeah, here are some of the um, images from the PDF uh, of the upcoming The Art of Miniature Monthly book. So these are all painted by uh, Aaron. Oh, he said that there, there's no studio version of the Bone Eaters yet. Maybe we can get, we've got an in. Yeah. <laughs> we, can make that, we can make that happen and make that ours. But uh, yeah, check these out. Um, Aaron was telling me that uh, the team at Flying Frog usually uh, sent him a bit of an idea, like maybe this color or that color or this colored pants or this colored shirt, mm -hmm. that kind of thing, to kind of match in with um, some of the story that they're telling with the, with the game. But... Uh, he generally has complete freedom as to how he paints those colors they suggest. And um, he's also allowed to, which is some, this is next bit is something that's un, usually unusual for a studio painting, is he has complete freedom with the basing as well. Um, so Ooh. in some cases, he's actually 3D sculpted bases that match with the background or match with the floor tiles from the, the game and printed those out. 3D sculpted, printed them out and painted them and stuck the models on. So, looks absolutely awesome. So, these are some cool ones here. Um, have we got the next? We do. Next yeah. Spread? I was trying to figure out a better way to show the photos because they're okay. kind of small right now. Right. Um, yeah. So, sorry. It's basically because I, I sent them to Leona in a an odd format, but um, yeah, check these out. So in the range, this is awesome magma giant, which is definitely super cool. And one of the things that Aaron has done with the, oh, there we go, Not down the bigger. bottom left picture, uh, is there are little, um, he's done little sort of droplets, mm -hmm. so as if some of the magma has fallen into other magma and like plopped up, but you can't, obviously you can't paint that arcing through the air, so he's painted it against the sort of the cooling magma of the feet, so it looks super cool, super awesome, hot, it looks hot. Right? Yes doesn't look cool at all uh but yeah absolutely beautiful stuff and we were talking about tonal um contrasts or not tonal mm -hmm. contrast hue contrast sorry yeah over on the dragon there you've got a nice vibrant red of the face and next to it depending on this picture you've got that 
the greens are in the um, the tail. Uh, so it's got that nice hue contrast going on. Definitely cool stuff. And there's stuff. even blue in the beard? Light blue? Yep, I think there's a little bit of uh, yeah, blue in there. That's yeah, nice. Really nice stuff. And in the next page, okay. there's some pretty crazy undertones in here, working in here as well. So this one here, uh, Aaron's still writing up some uh, text to go next to the this enormous skeleton there. But if you check that out, it's not just a case of he painted it bone and put like a brown wash on it, mm -hmm. which we do on the show to get it done quickly because it's such a big model. But he worked so many different colors into the the undertones of that bone there. It's yeah. just such a rich sort of real... Um, Looks like a to... real skull. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's been sitting out for a little while. Yeah. Definitely cool. And uh, so, Aaron, what, so, what are some of the... Um, thread out there to see if you just quickly put you on the spot just quickly what are some of the tricks or some of the the things that the people can use or i guess what colors would or why did you choose the colors that you did for the undertones here some of that sort of reddish um rust brown kind of look um there's a little bit of greens um that kind of thing why did you choose these colors for the bones so hopefully aaron will let us know that in a, in a few minutes but one of the other things, we were looking at that Dracolich earlier. Yeah, And yes. it had that, that greenish, uh, like the greenish teal sort of tinge. If you look around the eye socket and some of the um, wisps of cloth or yeah. tatters of cloth there, it's got that little magical glow. A blue. Yep, that little teal in there. So you can... Um, or green. Yeah. Know that it's, it, it's being magically animated. Um, which is very cool. It's not a real skeleton calling out at you. It's, yeah, it's not just a regular everyday walking around skeleton. <laughs> this one's magical. Man, this one's magical. Wow. This, this giant skeleton is magical, if you didn't know. Yeah, no, it's... <laughs> but it just really sort of drives that, that home. It doesn't give it the opportunity to be, like, Well, and it's an important note that it's not too much. Yeah. It's just enough. Yep. Yeah. On this mini. Yeah, really nice or and subtle. Not mini. Aaron re responded. Yep. So Aaron said there, yeah, he used really saturated colors in small amounts um, to create the the color variations. If the colors weren't very saturated, they wouldn't show up. So if you had a lot of subtlety in there, if you had um, a lot of grays running through those browns they sort of fade into the background there but as it is having those under there the um those more saturated colors really pop and then putting that the bone layers over the top um who help knock them back but they're still there Josh says if he says because they were pretty i don't know what I'm <laughs> sometimes you choose things because they're pretty it's just what you do josh it's the thing Sometimes that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Sometimes you got you got to get it with the program there, Josh. But uh, yeah, no, that's a I think that's a great some great advice there is just using that um, that saturation in there. He says, okay, switch between warm and cool colors to help the different different colors show up as well. So yeah, if, particularly you can see on the side of the the skull there, you've got some uh, like a greenish blue. And then it goes down into that reddish brown inside the um, that cavity that's sitting behind that ocular bone. Yep. Uh, so the temple cavity in the temple there. So uh, yeah, and if you look or look along the the different limbs um, at the joints, is where you can definitely see that so um, sort of that greenish um, hue come back in. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'd spoken with Aaron about this before. I just really love that, uh, love that paint job and that model. Looks absolutely awesome. And of course, sitting next to it, that big Oni demon um, with somebody trying to escape from his little 
Oh no, house. I didn't even see that. Yep, he's carrying up there. Um, oh, Aaron says I also have livery green. It's one of his favorite colors. Well, the most vibrant color that he has. Definitely cool. But uh, one of the things I love about the Oni Demon is the, um, and it's something that I think Gretchen would really appreciate is the uh, that tiger, yeah, tiger, tiger skin loincloth. Yeah. And he sort of, uh, it's a fur. Oh, I didn't even see that. Yeah. Oh yep. my god. That's a that's a crazy pattern to have to keep track of how the stripes would react to the the draping or the folds of that being. Yep. Yep. Definitely uh, looking very cool. So, yep. Excellent. Can you pop back uh, to? Yeah. If you go back to the the first. The first, first one. slide. Yep. Okay, give me a second. Oh, I just noticed you can see the page numbers on there, too, on that particular I, clip. Because <laughs> I... 42. 42 and 43. 42. They may, may not be the final page numbers, but... Okay. We're holding you to it. <laughs> right. I'm going to guess that on this, uh, the creature in that... Um, livery green. In the top picture. Is that some livery green there, Aaron? I think it might be. And maybe for that... Um, Magic yeah, the, spell. The, the void wizard. Oh, the, the spell. Yeah, the spell on that uh, spell effect down there. And also on that, uh, the void wizard on the right-hand side. Aaron said, I only had to paint the tiger stripes four times. Right. Wow. <laughs> Luckily. Luckily. <laughs> so Maybe there you the go, folks. Highlights. Okay. Aaron is a professional painter who has painted, I think Aaron's probably painted more models than I have. What? I know. It's crazy, right? That's like uh, more than... More than 10,000. 10,000. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and at this point, it's probably more than 12,000. Oh, you know, some of the green was necrotite green from uh, P3. Oh. Okay. Gotcha. Excellent. But oh, yeah, I good. love that purple wizard all the way to the right. All the right, On the yep. bottom. That's amazing. Yeah. I love the way that the, uh, is it the orb that he's holding... With yeah. the um, the that pink, the magenta, and then that magenta glow on the purple. So it doesn't. It it still reads as a glow rather than it a highlight does. on the purple. So awesome. More than two. More than two. <laughs> <laughs> yep, he's painted a couple. Uh, That's crazy. Well, they're looking awesome. Yep. The livery green is usually saved for glow effects and sometimes final highlights on green monsters. Gotcha. Yeah. Yep. Interesting. And, uh, yeah, we were talking about it. Some of the, there's one of the, well, there's a model that appears in the book um, in the section. Uh, it's an avatar of Kane, which is a Warhammer 40,000 model uh, made by Forgeworld. So it's a big resin model that uh, Aaron painted up and spent hundreds of hours on or at least a hundred hours on to win a uh, best of show uh, best of forge world show at a, go a golden demon event once and he was like I'm never painting another one of these again and then later in the book we show a second one <laughs> and he painted so one of those things when you're a commission painter you'll uh, you generally end up painting I'll never paint, paint this I'll again I'll never paint it again no, unless don't, don't just, just, just don't say that <laughs> yeah Somebody asked me earlier today if there was a model that I would never paint again. Was it even if I was paid, if, even if I was paid for it, and it's like, ah, actually, if I was paid for it, I'd paint any model again. <laughs> to be fair, you're like, I'll paint it. But my choice was smog. Okay. I would try. I was going to say smog. Painting smog, yeah. That that <laughs> yeah. would that would be my vote for you. Because <laughs> I know that yep. one was painful. Yep. So I just uh, noticed that uh, Liz. Liz jumped in the uh, in the chat there. Hey. Man, whoever painted these is an awesome artist. <laughs> Liz is the uh, is Aaron's girlfriend and also the uh, the social media director for uh, and sort of coordinator for the Miniature Monthly team. Uh, Liz is awesome too. It's definitely cool. Thanks very much for dropping in, Liz. Very cool. But Aaron cool. says, yeah, just when you think you're done with something, someone else wants one. <laughs> and you're like special price. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he says, I'm not an artist. You totally are, and you know it. No, you gotta say it. Embrace it. Yep. Oh, Dave Hummel says, always a joy to see your stuff, Aaron. 
definitely. Wow, I better get working on this guy. I'm too busy. Yeah, Gretchen's cooking. Aaron stuff, but uh, definitely cool. Yeah, so yeah. Aaron's oh. stuff so. was in the miniature monthly. The art, the art of miniature monthly. The art of miniature monthly. So yeah, the first cool. book in the three book, uh, the first three books for the art of series. Um, so things are going really well with the layout of that. So for folks who don't know, um, ran a Kickstarter back in April, May. Uh, for uh, to fund this series of books. So the first three volumes are The Art of Miniature Monthly, The Art of Christoph Kyle, and The Art of Anna Polanczyk. Uh I'm about, I think by the end of this weekend, this coming weekend, or certainly by the end of next week, I'll be at about 80% laid out and probably about 50% final pages and final editing. Wow. Which is really nice. Really excited you, by that. Been really like cruising. Yeah, um, just been been plowing through it. Uh, everyone's been really good, uh, getting their writing their their sections, photographing their miniatures, sending through the photos, all that kind of thing. So um, definitely cool. Nice. Oh, Aaron says they. It <laughs> says you are an artist, you goose. <laughs> <laughs> definitely good. But Liz uh, is definitely agreeing to being the cat wrangler, the chaos coordinator. I know. To a making bit sure about everybody needs where to be. Cat wrangling. <laughs> yep. <laughs> definitely cool. I do just want to say I think this is the most colorful I've seen Dave's palette. It's so beauty. Pretty. It is. It is lovely. I think um, what I might do is I'll do a few extra streaks and, and that kind of thing, and then we there can uh, we could frame it and send it out to somebody. <laughs> and say, remember that time. This is to memorialize that time that uh, that oh, Dave can painted you with just colors. A little bit farther, Dave. You're a little off. Oh, sorry. And I can't zoom there. Yeah. So yeah. Cool. Yeah. And then the... we can frame it, and then you're an artist. Then I'm an artist. Sweet. <laughs> I'm some kind of artist. Oh, see you, JT. But, yeah. Oh, thanks, thanks for JT. Everyone, uh, thanks for that. Oh, Aaron said, have you played Shadows of Brimstone? I have not played Shadows of Brimstone yet. I should probably, uh, next time I'm at Gen Con with the, where I usually hang out there with the Flying Frog, frog folks. Say that three times fast. Flying Frog folks. Flying Frog folks. Um, I, sh I probably should yeah. do a demo game. In there and uh, play through a demo. Kid friendly. Oh, what's that? Oh, super fun, kid friendly. That's cool. Yeah, I think my uh, my daughters would probably enjoy it. Josh, you saying that I should uh, auction off my uh, wet palette paper for charity? Yeah. That's a lovely thought. That somebody would pay money for that. <laughs> you know what I did once? I once. Uh, from like my watercolor paints yeah. I saved the palettes or like my paper that I used to control the flow of the water kind yep. of absorb that and then I cut it into butterfly shapes filled it in a jar and then gave that away oh wow okay that's cool let's see maybe if I cut this into um, bonita shapes there you and go. put those in a jar I like that. now you're work. getting creative <laughs> Well, now I'm copying your idea is what I'm doing there. Uh, <laughs> Not quite creative enough, but no we'll get there. But yeah, I'll do that. I'll make some extra nice. streaks with this paint after the show and we'll send, we'll give, right. give that away to somebody. Speed, speed running through this, uh, this yep. vermin. Well, we got, we're under the last, oh, we've got nine minutes. There we go. That's plenty of time. <laughs> But uh, yeah, one of the things I was going to say is with the uh, the Art of series, uh, it will uh, at some point in the probably first or second quarter next year will be coming to retail. But if you'd like to get on board now, the uh, pre-order store is open. So head to Backer Kit and do a quick search for the Art of, and it'll take you to the uh, pre-order store page. Might put something up about it in the uh, in the group too, 
but uh, yeah, it's definitely been, been super cool to be able to have a look at, uh, at some of Aaron's paint there. Does anybody have any questions about his, uh, his painting while we have him in the chat? Maybe we can throw up a quick look at, uh, I can put it back up. at some of those again. If you want me to put them back up, I, I can. That would be cool. I have like the Go Speed Racer song stuck in my head. I'm yeah. like, come on, I can, I can get this painted. I can get this painted. <laughs> well, that's the other thing is it'll be a nice surprise when we come back and we've got it finished. Yeah. Yeah. There I, we go. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get now it we can done. paint in private. <laughs> I, I can't. I can't guarantee that it'll be beautiful, <laughs> but I can guarantee that it will be done. Be done. Yep. That's cool. Um, oh, Josh says, uh, mount tonight's figures in a shadow box and use the palette as the backdrop. Mm -hmm. yeah. We could do that. Uh, they said, I'd, I'd say take my money, Dave, but I already sent it. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hummel. We appreciate that. Definitely cool. I will be doing a, an update on the Kickstarter this weekend so folks can get a little bit of a a sneak peek on some of the other pages that have been done. Very excited by it. Everyone's been getting into talking about sort of what miniature painting means to them and what their key uh, sort of driver and motivations are and looking at their projects and, and so on. It's been very cool. It's interesting looking at the lava miniature again. Yep. Because, um, Hopefully we'll be painting dungeon terrain. And oh, one yeah. of the things was painting like a lava like pit, a lava pit in your dungeon. Yeah, I and think so we can I definitely guess this is actually cooled lava. Yep. That's formed the skin. Yeah, I think it'll be uh it will be very cool to uh to bring this back up when we're when we're working on any any lava. Stuff oh, in Aaron the future. says, I'm actually a little jealous of you guys. I always wanted to paint the bone eaters, but they never had me do them. <laughs> we have a couple of extras we, we can send six. you. We have six. We've some extras we can send you. you, want, you <laughs> do you want some? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And down on the back here. Yeah, were you able to see Gretchen's finished guy? Dave, did you put your guy up on the spinner? I haven't. How about I do that? You should. Could I I, I don't. I don't want to touch. I'm going to use a, a card to move. Okay. Corrections, just because I think I'd get some sort of terrible illness. Oh, <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah, have you seen it? It's disgusting. It is disgusting, but in the best way. All right, now let me. Get yes, the disgusting, but that. in the best way. Without a doubt. It does look awesome. So. Yeah, check him out up close. Blah. And you see that the the uh, the fade is a bit more subtle there on the spinner cam. Man, that belly though. There's some chafing that's been going on in that belly. <laughs> Testing. Brilliantly done. Is that? Yep. Definitely cool. It is nice to um, be able to mess around with different different schemes and different uh, approaches. Yeah, I like that you went alien, Dave. Yep. And Gretchen went like zombie creature maybe <laughs> yeah definitely it, it's cool like left for dead not left yeah for dead. or um oh what's the really scary game there's lots of those that wasn't helpful resident evil yes. yeah there, thank I you for knowing talking. exactly what i was talking about <laughs> i've only i have never played the game but i've only seen the movies uh. my, my follow-up was going to be silent hill Say it's but all... I've, with that one, I've never seen the movies either. Or <laughs> we'll yeah. play the game. I'm glad I could help. But 
this one here, I've chosen to go with the um, basically blood in the mouth. Same as for the other one. But I would probably have been better off, better so doing a, a bright green, like a bile dripping. This is kind of like a, uh, like a tequila sunrise. <laughs> kind of mini. A little I'm, bit, a little bit. I'm feeling a little bit drunk. But yeah, that. I think on the camera there, it's a little bit. Uh, is it too purple? No, no. Uh, I mean the probably the the yellow is a little bit too orange. Oh, okay. But uh, that's cool. When I put it on the put it on the spinner there, so I've only got a couple of minutes left. <laughs> Let's put him. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna shuffle this around, and then when Gretchen is ready, we'll pop in the. What is he? What are they called? Vermin. Hell vermin. Hell vermin. And we'll be good to go there. So yeah, I love that fade as well. But it's nice to be able to just play around with that. I don't think I paint anywhere near enough minis that have that um, uh, have the ability, not ability, but just they would look good with that fade working through. So yeah, very nice. Oh, we've got, uh, Sean says Nurgle approves. Very definitely, particularly with Gretchen's there. It's a fantastic Nurgle mini. Uh, Aaron says they both look great in two completely different directions. They both ways work. And uh, Sean says a Call of Cthulhu. Yep, I think it's very definitely a Cthulhu feel to them. <laughs> Just, do you want to you want to read that one, <laughs> Leona? <laughs> Josh's question. Uh, Josh's oh, no, comment. I didn't see that. No, yeah. I didn't see that. I was <laughs> laughing at what Aaron said. Okay. But yeah, uh, Josh said yeah. When Cthulhu calls, he always sweeps out uh, and makes it collect or reverse charges. <laughs> it's enough to make you mad, right? Very angry. Uh, Noble for like life. Mutant naked mole rats. They are indeed. Very much, Travis. Yeah, there's so many things you can do with them. That'd be awesome. Such very cool details. Excellent pose. I think it'd be fun to um, to see some conversions on these as well. That's what I was thinking when I was gluing them down on their right. bases. Yep. I was like, you could you could do some fun fun stuff with these guys. Yep. And even like, not even just conversion, but just like change their feet. <laughs> like change where their feet are. Right. You could make them like more climbing, maybe. Okay. I guess that is conversion. Yeah. I'm thinking like kip, kip bash when you said conversion. Right, okay. Yeah, I was thinking of moving the arms too. around a little bit. Yeah, I was thinking of moving the arms. Yeah, and uh, also I think to, if you wanted to go down that Cthulhu sort of fish people route, you could add a little sort of fin down the back. Oh, true. Or sort of spine of um, spikes or a lot of cool things like that. And on the tail, that little vestigial tail they have there, you could uh, add some... Uh, some membranes on that. I think would be great. All right. Cool, cool. cool. Is Excellent. it done? No. Is it completely covered in paint? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Should we show it? Yeah, we can show it. We can show okay. it. Excellent. Tentacles out of the mouth. Yeah. Nurgle them up and add an eye and a horn. <laughs> right. Yep, that would be great. Are these uh, right in the middle there. PVC or polystyrene? These are... Do you happen to know, Dave? <laughs> I think these are, um, these are polystyrene, aren't they, Aaron? Look they, at him! They don't have a bend to them, so... He has all the right colors in all the right places. Yeah! Yep. <laughs> he looks great. <laughs> Speed Very cool. That's awesome. There we go, Aaron says hard plastic like GW. So yeah, polystyrene, high impact polystyrene. 
but yeah, Very cool. they're definitely a lot of fun to, to, to paint on. So yeah, nice. Which is, I've seen, seen that drooling watching the big screen spinner. Yeah, I know. Nice. <laughs> we missed the big screen spinner. Yeah. It was. It's, it's so nice to have it back. <laughs> Thank you, Leona. You're welcome. <laughs> Leo, Leona always takes care of us. Yep. Excellent. So you, do you have the, both the boxes over there? I do. I'll show those. Ah. Ta-da! The Helmerman and the Bone Eaters. Shadows of Brimstone, Forbidden Fortress, Enemy Woo. Pack Bone Eaters. Hello, Vermin. Hello, Vermin. Age is awesome 12 stuff. and up. <laughs> <laughs> that's, how, that's how you want to read it, isn't it? Just the name <laughs> plus <laughs> age is 12 and up. Just read random things on here. Yeah. <laughs> so definitely uh, check that out. Uh, take a look at uh, Flying Florog Productions and Shadows of Brimstone. Uh, Google all of the uh, minis that uh, Aaron has painted on their, their website. Yeah. They're fantastic. Uh, you can pick those up now, I believe. Yep. From your friendly oh, local wow. game store. And they can order them from Alliance Game Distributors. Uh, so they can do that now. Now. Right now. Do it now. Well, maybe tomorrow. Do it tomorrow. No, no. Now's fine. Now's fine. Whatever you're doing. Send just... an email <laughs> to your rep at Alliance mm -hmm. and order them now. But uh, yeah, definitely cool. Who debones for the bone eaters? I think that might be what the slime's for. For, oh yeah, yeah, good idea. Just like melts the flesh and leaves the bones. So they spit on it. Yeah. Blah. 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 Yeah. And they hold they hold you with their clammy hands. And they <laughs> <laughs> it's just a pleasure for the senses. You got oh. you have the slime and you have the clamminess. And Gretchen, it's just that's nasty. Oh, too far. Too <laughs> No, fantastic. Excellent. So, thank you very All much, right. everybody. Yeah, we thanks so much you. for joining us. Leona, do you know what we're going to paint next week? Yeah, hopefully the dungeon. Hopefully the dungeon. We'll, well we have the box over there. That, all... that box as well. Um, Super huge. I do. We're, just, we're still planning how we're going to boxes. do this. I have all the boxes. Yeah. It's yeah, so we're going to hopefully... over on the owner's side of the room. So Play, paint, there. the Game hmm. Master Dungeon Caverns... Corset. Corset. Your own dungeon. So yeah, but I just kind of have ago, to figure out. I brought in the um, the dungeon, like final boss room that I did up for the free RPG day booklet that I'm doing with Mantic Games and the Army Painter. Uh, so I'll bring that back in. But yeah, I think we'll have a chat over the, the next seven days and work out exactly how we're going to do it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, now that we know that we're going to do Garistro's Bistro. <laughs> I I want to find fun little bistro things now to just like yep. stick in there. Dollhouse bistro setting. Be fantastic. How about that? But yeah, definitely cool. So fingers yep. crossed we'll be doing that. All right. Well, Josh says see you all in 165 hours. And on that note, uh, have a wonderful weekend, guys. <laughs> cool. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye.